Uh, sir, uh, Jonathan, thank you for coming on tonight. So is this, can this be seen as a win for the president at this point? Uh, this is a skirmish. It, it shouldn't be taken uh, as too much of a weighty uh, change in the in the case. Uh, the problem with this litigation is it began with a truly horrifically drafted uh, agreement by Michael Cohen, uh, and it was really filled with flaws that uh, Daniel's attorney has, has succeeded in um, attacking. Uh, the problem that I have is I often tell my, uh, my students that you don't litigate because you can. You have to constantly ask yourself, what am I trying to achieve now for my client and going forward? I don't see any intelligent design behind uh, the president's counsel in pursuing this matter. I mean, this the legal and political costs for President Trump will only rise. The story's out. Now, Mr. Cohen says that he wants to get $20 million and go on a vacation with it, but that's not a strategy, and it's certainly not putting President Trump's interest uh, ahead of his own. So what does that um, say about the legal team that he has around him right now, Jonathan? Well, I, I think you can pretty much pick up how I view that. Uh, Mr. Cohen um, is really punching above his 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 uh, you know his weight class uh, against Michael Avenetti. I admit he's my former research assistant, but I got to tell you, the only thing those two have in common is their first name. I mean, Avenetti has done a remarkable job in going from the defense to the offense, but ultimately, Mr. Cohen's agreement um, is going to have a hard time standing up because Mr. Cohen. Cohen's attorney, uh, Mr. Swartz, said last night that the president was never aware of the final details of the agreement or even possibly the, de hmm. the agreement as a whole. That's going to create serious problems because that would make it sound like he's not a party to this agreement. The arbitration clause seems to rest in his hands. And I know you wrote a big piece on this uh, uh, published on, on your blog tonight. Um, in that piece, Jonathan, you say Trump faces John Edwards' fate. Can you explain the comparison and where you're suggesting this is heading from here? Well, this is sort of like Christmas future. It's not necessarily his future, but he's going to have to show uh, a, a much greater level of discipline over his counsel and his choices in, in, in the Daniels case. I've never believed that collusion represented a threat to President Trump. This can and people should not underestimate it. John Edwards was indicted for in-kind campaign finance violations when third parties uh, gave money to his mistress. Now, the problem with what was said by Mr. Swartz last night when he said that Trump really didn't have any knowledge of this, it makes that $130,000 that Cohen paid out of his own account look like an in-kind campaign contribution. That's what Edwards was indicted for. And it also creates... But look like and being one are two, I, mean, I don't have to tell you that, are two completely different things. So that's, that's right. And I was critical of the Edwards indictment. So your point is a good one. I still have a difficulty with this theory, but it was good enough to pull him into a court of law. The, the problem for President Trump is that this can metastasize from a civil to a criminal matter. He doesn't want to have that happen. And I have to tell you, he doesn't want that to happen right. with Michael Cohen as lead counsel. All right. Well, I Point taken. I've only got a few seconds left from here, Jonathan, so I'm sorry to put you under this pinch. But <laughs> you, he's your client. What do, you, what do you do? What are his options right now, best options? Drop the litigation. You have nothing in this. That is, going to, to, that is going to improve the situation. You get out of the litigation, uh, and then the rest you can handle. But I don't see any reason why President Trump's counsel would want any part of this. Jonathan Turley, excellent to get your perspective on that tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Up next, more than a dozen states now suing to stop a Trump administration mandate to ask about citizenship on the 2020 census as Democrats fear the move could put them out of power. Baltimore Mayor Ka Catherine Pug is one of those. She joins me live next. Plus, a bombshell in the Pulse nightclub shooting. We're just learning that the shooter's father was